There's no way you can convince me to use a full-size keyboard. I never use the numpad. I find them way too restricting and large. So here's a list of my favorite small keyboards, including a 60%er, a 65%er, and of course TKL, that I feel like you should 100% consider. Wink, that's our keyboard size joke over here. If you haven't seen our keyboard sizes explained video, check it out over here. Double wink. If this is how everyone flirts, we don't have a problem. Now for context, I use a TKL keyboard on my editing desk. I use a 65% keyboard on my gaming desk and I travel with a 60%er to use with my notebook. In all these situations, my DPI for the mouse is between 400 and 1000. And that is the primary reason I choose small keyboards over full size because of all that additional real estate for my hand movement. The new N7 B550 gaming motherboard from NZXT is something out of the ordinary. The clean aesthetics with the metal cover is a minimalist dream come true. You get built-in IO shield and headers that are laid out optimally for a simple plug and play setup. The N7 also supports third-party RGB accessories through CAM software, available in both black and white models, as well as Intel and AMD. Learn more down below. So let's begin on the smaller end, starting with a 60% layout. So I gravitate mainly towards these two keyboards, the HyperX Alloy Origin 60 and the Razer Huntsman Mini. So the Origin 60 first, uh, it has really nice density with the aluminum frame, which is so important so it doesn't slide around being so small. And it also feels like a high quality product. The USB-C cable is detachable. The keycaps are double shot PBT with a pleasant, slightly smoother texture versus your common PBT, but still it does not reveal anything. The font is a bit chunky, but still easily legible. The insanely bright RGB is a bonus and all the side printed controls are in view that you can quickly memorize and become comfortable with. I especially like the location of the arrow key since with your pinky, you can find the function and then use the rest of your hand to navigate around the screen versus your traditional uh, arrow keys that are built into the 60 percenter with the IJKL, which I find to be really uncomfortable to use. So really good on HyperX to making sure to reposition those arrow keys to be actually usable in game. The switches, however, are the primary reason why this travel is with me. So this is the HyperX red linear switch that feels smooth with a nice sound profile. The stabilizers on the larger keys are awesome. And it's because of this keyboard, I have hope for the 60 percent form factor. My runner up is the Razer Huntsman Mini. Now construction wise, it's not as good as the HyperX and I don't particularly like the spread of the secondary controls, but the white frame is stunning with any type of illumination. I mean, just look at how sexy that fire mode shines through the double shot clean PBT keycaps. The cable is removable like with many other 60% keyboards, but the winner for me here are the switches. These are the Gen 2 linear optical switches that have silicon sound dampeners and generous amount of lubing. This makes them very quiet and absolute pleasure to bottom out with. My number one complaint, unfortunately, with the Mini is Synapse, since the keyboard has built-in memory, so you can travel with your macros and your key bindings with you without having Synapse installed running in the background, but it does not remember your RGB illumination presets, which is just so frustrating and annoying, like why? And also on occasions, my USB-C cable, like a separate custom cable, was not actually being recognized by Synapse. Like the keyboard was functioning just fine, but it was not being recognized in the software unless I plug in the Razer cab the cable. Again, why? Now let's move on to the slightly growing category of 65% keyboards with my new favorite wireless friend, the ROG Falchion. Not Falcon, not Falcon, Falchion, I think. Falchion, yeah. Now the main advantage of this size versus the 60 percenter is that extra column above the arrow keys. Turns out I constantly use delete and page up. Now this keyboard is kind of loaded, so included is a protective cover that doubles down as a base for this non-low profile frame. The USB dongle stash is in the middle here beside the USB-C port and the power switch. We have this really cool capacitive strip on the side of the keyboard to control your volume and other things that you can configure that is surprisingly accurate. Plus it's illuminated and real 
ideal time to showcase your battery life. It lasts around 50 hours of continuous usage with RGB enabled, which is pretty impressive, and up to 400 hours with RGB disabled. And so I would go on slightly lower settings so you can still see the keys, but it will significantly extend your battery life. The keycaps are half height, double shot PBT with that weird font, but bright white secondary characters, which I appreciate that are all mainly situated around your left hand. So you can activate function with your right thumb and quickly navigate with your left fingers. Also because the space bar is so short, the bottom row is basically standard for keycap swapping, but I generally leave keycap stock for smaller keyboards just because I want to still have all the secondary controls and also good luck finding a slightly shorter space bar if you're trying to like do the whole perimeter match or like a colorway. So it's not exactly friendly for keycap swapping, but everything around the space bar is made to be accessible. And finally, the switches here are MX Cherry Red, which are super smooth, very familiar to the HyperX earlier, but with less quality stabilizers and slightly more pinging. The only thing to look out for are the accidental volume adjustments. If you're actually handling the keyboard on the desk, it will pick that up. And also, my gosh, I think the Armory Crate software may be actually even slightly worse than Razer Synapse because at least the green stuff loads. Whereas with the ASUS stuff, I was constantly greeted with that spinning red circle. Come on, RG, come on. RG, what, what are you doing? Now my runner up is the Fnatic Streak 65. So this one's a bit on the basic side with a really light plastic frame, low profile ABS keycaps, removable USB-C cable, and apparently this magnetic plate that I've only now discovered. And get this, no static illumination in the software. So what you have to do is create a two color gradient to match the color from one end to the other, which I find so bizarre. Otherwise, the RGB is pretty gorgeous with two extra LEDs under the space bar, so there's no dead zone for color spill. A bit of a flex, I like it. But in real world use, it's an incredible option for gaming that just makes sense. The stabilizers are lubed, the low profile speed switches are perfectly linear with fast actuation at one millimeter with total travel of 3.2, but still with a 45 gram weight for actuation, so I never accidentally depress the keys. And I cannot say the same for like MX speed switches. Seriously, if you want something reliable, simple and pleasant on your fingers, the Streak 65 is an easy recommendation. My fun extra keyboard is the Ducky Mecha SF Radiant Ocean Edition. This is for those who want something a little bit extra special because of that unique colorway and that gorgeous aluminum radiant uh, base. You know, you don't have to resort to a custom keyboard. You kind of have this all in one package already ready for you. So that gorgeous aluminum case, it shines in beautiful blues, greens, and purples. It's also extremely stable because of the weight and grippy feet. The Ducky logo is tasteful and built into the frame for that special feel. And I love the triple tone ocean blue keycap set. It is the 1-2 SF keyboard at its core. So all the secondary controls work by default. They're just not displayed on the keycaps, which I think is the right approach to keep things uh, you know, towards that whole colorway. These are high quality double shot PBT keycaps, no complaints here at all. And we even have a few white spares to diversify the spread and the arrow keys for the IJKL if you use them often. The Mecha SF is the definition of quality with refined MX Cherry switches now up to 100 million keystrokes that should satisfy your fingers 100%. Now the last category is TKL, which is my favorite. It's the no compromise size. And you already know my kind of go-to TKL keyboard is the ExtraFi K4 TKL RGB Retro Edition because of this. So there's this foam piece inside the body to prevent pinging and all the large keys are beautifully sound dampened and lubed. I recently actually cleaned it 
and it's back on my desk. It's not very flashy features wise since the keycaps are double shot ABS, although very high quality build and clean font, nothing's rubbing off. The cable is non-removable, there's no software. It is quite bare bones and it's exactly why I love it. Clean, super smooth uh, linear switches, retro vibes, it's perfect. I also recently went back to my Vermilo TKL keyboard, the VA87M. I also swapped out the stock keycaps with this cool glorious colorway. I mean, it is Pride Month after all, but I went back to it because of the switches. So here we have the Vermilo electrocapacitive Sakura switches bringing those Topra vibes. If you ever typed on the Topra keyboard, this is very similar. This is one of the smoothest switches in my experience. And as you bottom out, the resistance increases. So you get that really smooth kind of dampening of the bottom out. So they're quite pleasant to type on and they're not very loud either. Unfortunately, the switches are south facing. So for most keycaps that have shine through, it doesn't really work for me. I don't like that style of illumination, but at least the typing experience makes up for all of that. Now I get this keyboard a few years ago. So the mini USB cable is not really up to par for our 2021 needs, but still I feel like Vermilo deserves a bit of credit because they're bringing these custom styles into an affordable space. And when gaming keyboards are so expensive, Choosing a Vermilo, which you can customize from switches to the actual keycap colorways, uh, just right out of the factory. Uh, you know, more people should gravitate towards approach. And lastly, my Rocket Vulcan TKL Pro deserves a mention here for sure. The keyboard style is definitely unique with those low profile floating ABS keycaps that catch your fingers perfectly with those grooves. The USB-C cable is removable, the volume knob is best in class, and the Titan linear optical switches are light and super smooth, which is why I love this keyboard for gaming. But of course, being a gaming keyboard, it will not win any awards from keyboard enthusiasts because a fairly loud pinging from the spacebar. The keycap surface being ABS picks up a lot of dirt and it's also a fairly expensive keyboard having that optical switch. All right, so those are my favorite small keyboards. I am more and more gravitating towards the 65% form factor, uh, although that 60% alloy origins is like the reason why I feel like 60% keyboards exist because of that smart layout. You can navigate with the arrow keys, no problem. But I would love to hear what your latest keyboard obsession is. Let me know in the comments. I'm Dimitri, thanks so much for watching. Check out this other relevant content. Subscribe for more, and I'll talk to you in the next video.